Hi Year 7, I hope you're all well and I hope you're finding these videos useful and the work that we set accessible to you all. Thank you to everybody who has submitted and uploaded their work to show my homework. We have been checking it, we have been marking down who's done it and who's not. Um, we have seen some really good pieces of work so keep up to hard work and we do really appreciate it. So let's have a look at lesson three. Lesson two we had a look at how waves form. This lesson we're going to have a look at constructive and destructive waves. So we're going to ha have a look at identifying the characteristics between the two types of waves and also looking at the differences between them. So before we start lesson three, going back to lesson two, I set an extension research activity, which you could have done. So you can check your answer or check your diagram with what I'm going to show on the next slide. But the research activity was just to research what happens to waves as they approach the shore. Like I said, you could have included a diagram to help with your explanation. So there's a diagram and there's a brief description underneath it, which we'll just run through. So how, what happens to waves when they approach the shore? Well, basically waves break when they approach the shore, but what this, does this actually mean? So when out in open water, waves have this circular orbit. Okay, you can see that on the diagram, you see it by the red arrows. So they're at sea and they go around in a circle. However, when they start to approach the shore, this circular orbit starts to change. So as the water approaches the coastline, it has an increasing contact with the shelving seabed. So remember the seabed's not all the same level, It, the water will get shallower as you approach the coastline. And as the waves approach the coastline, there is a frictional force on the base of the wave. So at the bottom of the wave, there, there's this build up of friction between the wave and the seabed. So this changes the norm, normal circular orbit and creates this elliptical orbit. And you can see that in the middle of the diagram. As the wave gets close to the coast, friction grows even more and then the top of the wave moves faster than the base because that's where the friction is building up. The friction is building up at the base of the wave so it's causing it to be slower than the water moving at the top of the wave going up to the beach. Eventually at a critical point, the top of the wave which is called the crest curves over and this creates the breaking wave. So it's the curve of the top of the wave that creates the breaking wave. This breaking wave can further be disrupted by water returning down the coastline back out to sea. So it's this backwash, the water moving back out to sea that can disrupt that breaking wave even further. Okay, but you can check your answer and hopefully you've got something like that. You might not have used the exact um, key terminology, but if you've got something like that in a diagram, something like that, then that's great. So moving on to lesson three, we're going to have a look at two types of waves. So they can be constructive or destructive. When a wave breaks, water is washed up the beach. This is called the swash. So water moving up the beach by the wave breaking is called the swash. Then when water runs back down the beach, so running back down, if you imagine that you're stood on a beach and you're just watching the waves, the waves coming up the beach is the swash and waves running back down the beach is called the backwash. With a constructive wave, the swash is stronger than the backwash. So that movement of water up the beach is stronger than it moving back down. Whereas with a destructive wave, that is the opposite. So the backwash is stronger than the swash. There's a more powerful backwash, more, more powerful movement of water moving back down the beach than up the beach with the destructive wave. So there's gonna be a table on the next slide which, which just outlines the key differences between the two types. You're welcome to pause it and copy it down if you want to, but it just very simply outlines the differences between the two types of wave. Okay, so you can quite clearly see the differences. Straight away you can see that a destructive wave has high energy, whereas a constructive wave has low energy. I've already talked about swash and backwash being the opposite for each. Destructive has a higher wave height, so the calculation between the crest and the trough. Destructive has higher a wave height. They create different shapes of beach. So constructive is wide and flat beaches, whereas destructive waves create steep and narrow beaches. And then the frequency is also different. So frequency just means how often the waves come in succession. 
So with constructive, you get about six to eight waves per minute, whereas destructive is a lot more, so between 10 and 14 per minute. We're going to now go on to both the waves in a bit more detail and have a look at diagrams for each of the waves and sort of what they look like on a beach. So constructive waves, just going through it again, if the swash is stronger than the backwash, you get a constructive wave. This means that some sediment that's carried in the wave, so that swash is stronger so it can carry more sediment, and that sediment will be left behind on the beach because there's not as much power bringing it back into the sea through backwash because it's a weak backwash. So this means that the beach increases in size. So constructive waves build up or construct the beach. They've got low energy. They're low in height, the waves, so it's rubbish for surfing. So you wouldn't look for constructive waves if you're going to go surfing. They're created in um, calm weather and they have much less power than destructive waves. Constructive waves have a strong swash, so you can see that by the light blue arrow. But they have a weak backwash. So it's that swash that can carry material up the beach. And then it's left there because the backwash is much weaker and therefore it doesn't pull the material back down with it. It doesn't have the energy to pull the material back down to sea with it. Whereas destructive waves, we know that the swash and the backwash is the opposite. So if the swash is weaker than the backwash, you get a destructive wave. So that means very little sediment is carried up the beach because it's not got a very powerful swash. Whereas it's got a strong backwash that's going to remove the material from the beach and therefore the beach is going to decrease in size. So destructive waves do the opposite, they have more energy and they use that energy to erode or destroy the coastline. So they've got lots of energy, the waves are much steeper and further apart which is great for surfing. So they're the types of waves you'd look for if you wanted to go surfing. A taller wave breaks downwards with more force which wears away the beach. So as you can see by the arrows again, the light blue wave being the swash again, that swash is very weak, it's not very powerful, it can't carry the sediment up the beach the same as the constructive waves. Whereas the backwash is very strong and it can take material off the beach, therefore destroying the beach. Okay, so there's a little bit of a quiz now where I'm just going to show you different images of different types of waves. And I just want you to decide whether they're constructive or destructive waves. You can write down your answer on a piece of paper or you can just think them out in your head or you can tell someone what you think the answer is. But basically I'll show you the image, image for a couple of seconds, give you time to think about it and then we'll go through it. Try and think of a reason why you think it's constructive or destructive as well. Okay, so the first one is a tall wave with lots of energy. So just think if it's destructive or constructive. Okay, so I'll show the answer. So this is of course destructive. So it's a large wave, it's got a lot of energy. You can see that powerful break of the wave as well. Second one, a wave that is low in height and low in energy. Okay, so that is of course constructive. Constructive has not a lot of energy compared to destructive. Here's an example of some sort of case study. So winter storms in December 2013 and January 2014. What type of waves do you think are associated with these storms? Okay, so this is, of course, destructive. So you've got huge amounts of energy which are formed during storms. Constructive tends to be formed during calmer weather conditions. So a coral reef, think about which type of wave might have the minimum amount of disturbance to a coral reef. Okay, so this is constructive because you've got low energy and therefore there's not going to be a lot of disturbance to a reef. Okay, so the next one is a surfing competition. So what type of wave would you associate with surfing?
Okay, so this would be destructive and a high energy that creates tall waves. A sandcastle competition. So this would be constructive because constructive waves remove little beach material and therefore your beach and your sandcastles aren't going to be destroyed in constructive waves. Whereas if it was a destructive wave, that backwash would just take your sandcastles with it back out to sea. Okay, and here you've got some landforms that are created by a certain type of wave. So what type of wave would you think creates landforms like these sea stacks? And that would be destructive because you've got high energy and therefore there's lots of erosional power. These are landforms that are created by erosion and we will be looking at them in a bit more detail in a couple of lessons time. Okay, so there's some tasks here for you to complete. So task one is looking at the table that I put on the previous slide. Some of you might have copied it down. But using the table below, create two diagrams, including labels and annotations, showing the difference between constructive and destructive waves. Now, as a challenge, what you could do is try not to look back at the slide that has the diagrams already on. So you could try and remember them or try and just use the table to help you draw them and label them. Okay, so then there's some extension questions for you to have a go at. So question one, what different features would you associate with the different types of waves? Think about what you would see along a coast. Do you know what they're called? So the beach is a feature. So what type of, what type of wave would you associate a beach with? Um, that last image on the quiz was also a feature that we're going to have a look at in a few lessons time. What type of wave do you associate that with? Can you think of any other features and the types of wave you associate it with? Then question two. How will the type of rock affect the impact of the wave? So there you're thinking about hard and soft rock linking back to lesson one and lesson two on coasts. Um, so you could go back and have a look at them. But you could even think of the hard and soft rock and give some examples of the types of hard and soft rock and what is going to happen when each type of wave hits that type of rock. And then question three, what can be done to stop the waves eroding the beach away? So here you could do some wider research if you want to. Um, but how can beaches be sustained and stop being eroded from destructive waves? Um, complete the questions on line paper or you can do it on the computer if you want to. And then once you've completed task one and then if you want to do the extension questions, you can submit it on Show My Homework by uploading a picture of your work or uploading a file if you've done it on the computer. Thank you again for watching and thank you for all the hard work that you've been doing. There will be a quiz to go with this lesson as well, but please, please, please make sure you watch the lesson and complete the tasks and the questions before you do the quiz. The quiz is there for us to check your understanding of the work that we've set and therefore it's pointless if you just have a go at it without completing any of the work that's set. Thank you.